In 2016, members of the Little Rock Town Council had a meeting with District 7 Senior Transportation Engineer of Caltrans in regard to the widening of Highway 138 through Little Rock from 77th Street East to 87th Street East. Prior to that, there had been many meetings between Caltrans and the property owners and merchants of Little Rock. Caltrans originally wanted to widen the highway in downtown Little Rock to four lanes and they also wanted to include curbs, gutters, sidewalks, and driveways. Property owners and the merchants of Little Rock did not like the idea for the following reasons. One, with a four-lane highway, trying to make a left-hand turn into a merchant's facility would be impossible. Two, trying to accommodate four lanes through Little Rock would also disrupt a lot of already established buildings in town. In fact, one building had to be removed altogether already as it was. Three, prior to the widening proposal, one could easily pull off the highway to enter a merchant's place of business. This was also true for truck delivery and if a truck needed to pull over, it could easily be accomplished by just pulling over to the side of the road. So having curbs and driveways and sidewalks could be a big problem and merchants and the property owners did not want them. Caltrans then countered going with three lanes through town. The center lane would serve as a left-hand turn lane. But the curbs, sidewalks, gutters, and driveways were forced onto the community. Caltrans demanding that those needed to be put in place for pedestrian safety. Another part of Caltrans' plan was to construct a drainage system for future development under the highway. In over 100 years, Little Rock never had a drainage problem except for a couple of times when Little Rock Dam crested flooding Little Rock Creek and the region. Most of the worst flooding followed the Little Rock Ditch, flowing down 82nd Street and then emptied into a wash off of you that empties into Little Rock Creek. So what did Caltrans do with the drainage system that comes off the highway? They merged it with that very same wash that empties into Little Rock Creek, which then seeps into our water table. The wash was intended for freshwater runoff from flooding and not from polluted water that is coming off the highway that contains all of the nasty stuff that you can imagine. Getting back to the highway, when Caltrans constructed the drainage system, they ended up raising the north side of the highway anywhere from four to six feet in places, leaving several merchants on the north side of the highway down in a hole. And when it does rain, the water doesn't only go down the drain, it also proceeds to flood the front entrances of the merchants who are now victims of poor planning on Caltrans' part. You can see by some of these photographs that the merchants on the north side of the highway were completely level and that it was very easy to get in their facilities prior to them raising the highway on the north side. The driveways are too narrow. If somebody is trying to make a left-hand turn out of any given driveway, and if somebody is trying to make a right-hand turn in one of those driveways at the same time, there is not enough room to accommodate both vehicles. And if a truck is headed down the highway behind the person who's trying to make the right-hand turn, then that person usually has to hop the curb in order to get out of the way of the truck. And there are several people that I have talked to that have had flat tires and bent rims because of this issue. Several of the driveways are also way too steep and delivery trucks and even long motorhomes have gotten high centered trying to pull out of these driveways. In fact, one of our merchants even has a sign which redirects delivery trucks to use a side street for access to their property. During this meeting, we also told them that the community did not want the bridge to be widened on the east side of town to leave that section as is. This would be the widening of the 96th Street Bridge to 87th Street East. The section currently works naturally as to create a bottleneck and slow down the traffic. That part of the project was supposed to start back in the winter of 2018. 
Caltrans has not begun that phase of the project and we still feel the same way and would like them to reconsider and leave the bridge and that portion of the project alone. We have also requested for the speed limit to be reduced down to 35 miles through town. People on the weekdays, especially our truckers, are going way too fast and make it very hard to get in and out of the driveways safely. Another problem that we're having is that truckers can no longer pull over to the side of the road if they need to stop when they are coming through town. So what do they do? They park in the center left-hand turn lane. After our meeting in 2016, Caltrans said that they would take a look at our issues and get back to us. Now here we are in 2019, no changes and things are really starting to fail. The driveways in town are absolutely impossible. There is no speed control. Properties on the north side of the street are becoming vacant. Nobody wants to rent a location that is impossible to serve. And the worst part of it is our sidewalks. They are upheaving and becoming very dangerous to pedestrians whom they are supposed to serve. The other day while driving down the highway, there was this little old man in a wheelchair that could not get over the broken sidewalk and was trying to navigate around the rubble only to have an uphill battle because when he went around the rubble, he had to detour via one of the driveways on the north side of the street that had been raised because of the drainage system. Caltrans claim that sidewalks are mandatory for the safety of pedestrian foot traffic. Does any of this look safe to you? All of this proves that there is a problem and this problem can no longer be ignored. Little Rock is over 100 years old and we never really had a problem until now. We are calling out to our state and county officials along with the ADA to get these problems fixed and to get them fixed now before something really tragic happens. Please feel free to leave your comments and suggestions below, or you can contact us by calling 661-944-2299. That's 661-944-2299. Thank you.